Hey there guys, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. In the last episode, we uh, we went after the Duramboros again, and it went a lot better than the previous attempt. Now we're going after the Baryoth. And I totally expect this to go a lot easier than uh, previous couple episodes. Simply because the Baryoth is not really a very difficult monster to fight. In my opinion, at least. Anyway, it's in the tundra, so bring hot drinks, although they do still give you a couple in here, so... What I usually do is just bring three, because they give you two in here. Because if you bring five, then you won't have room for the two in here, and then you'll just be wasting your own. So it's, it's little things like that, you know, a little bit of resource management. Think about it. Anyway... Still bringing the uh, Rathalos Katana that I debuted in the last episode. And the Baryoth, if my memory serves me correctly, will always start out in Area 2. The first time you do this mission, at least, because, you know, that's where the cutscene plays. Yep. Alright, then. Oh, look, it's a couple of those mammoth-looking things. What were they called again? Popos, I think. Anyway, there's the Baryoth. It's a big saber tooth cat dragon thing. And it looks pretty cool. So it smashes that guy into the ice and, uh, yeah, that kills him for some reason, even though there's no blood or anything to be seen. Or as you'd think, blood would be flying around if the Popo got slashed like that. But nope, this game has to have a. What was the age rating for this game? Hang on, I have the box right here. I'll grab it and take a look. Oh, it's only 12 plus over here. I'm not sure what that is in American. Because their age ratings are all just weird. And we just list the freaking age that you have to be to play the game, at least. Oh, that's a new move, by the way. That uh, hip check thing. I'm pretty damn sure that he didn't have that in try. So, yeah, the Barry off. He's, um, uh, quite fast. Although he's not really displaying it very well right now. And, if, as you may expect from a Tundra monster, he can shoot ice. So, other than the Lagombi, this guy will be your first option for ice weapons. Because I'm not sure what Lagombi weapons there are. I know there's a long... or a, or a gun lance, which I have. And I think there's also dual swords, but I'm not sure about the other weapon classes. So, probably for most weapon classes, the Baryoth will be the first ice weapon you can get your hands on. Even though the Baryoth doesn't have a gun lance, also doesn't have a long sword. Um, so I know the Baryoth has a lance, a sword and shield. I think a great sword, hunting horn. Probably like some bows and bow guns, but I don't really care about those. Uh, switch axe as well, I believe. Almost everything, except for, I think, the hammer, the gun lance, and the long sword. But I do think you need a couple barry off parts to make the ice long sword anyway. Uh, let's see, what else is there to discuss? Breakable parts. Barry off has quite a few of those. You can break his tusks, you can break both of his wings, and you can cut his tail off. Now, cutting his tail off is pretty handy, because as you can see, it's quite long. And he does have a couple of tail swipe attacks that'll have their range drastically shortened if you cut the tail off. However, I find the Baryoth's tail quite difficult to cut off for some reason. I'm not sure why, I keep getting the feeling that it just takes a lot of damage. Like, the Logicrus tail, that comes off without almost even trying, but the Baryoth tail just seems like it's really stuck on there. Damn it. Push me out of the way. And breaking his wings is also really helpful. Because it's very easy for new players to find themselves overwhelmed by the Baryoth's quite insane speed. But if you manage to break both of his wings, then... He'll kind of slip around on the ice. 
like he uses those spikes on his wings for better traction. If you break those, he doesn't really have that good of that. His traction just goes down the toilet. See, when he does that move, he'll spend quite a long time on the ground trying to get himself up straight again. So if you find yourself overwhelmed by his speed, just break his wings and he'll slow down quite a lot. And then you can break his tusks, which doesn't really make him weaker in any way, it just gives you extra rewards. It's the only way to get Baryoth tusks in the rewards or the carves or whatever. Anyway, I'm not really sure why, but I keep getting the feeling that they nerfed him an awful lot from Tri. Because in Tri, he was a lot faster, I believe. I think he had a lot less downtime in between attacks. Oh, ooh, nice. Just skip rope over his tail. Or whatever. Oh, come on, Chacha. Or Kayamba, or whoever the hell's forecastering out of here. If you just get that tail off. Oh, jeez. That was close. Anyway, yeah, if you, uh... That ice breath attack that he has, it can cause you to get stuck in ice. Which you might want to bring cleansers for. I'm not sure if they give you a couple in the box or not. But it doesn't hurt to bring your own. Oh, there we go. Nice. That was quite quick, actually. Now, what do I get from it? A burial tail. Makes sense. Oh, crap. Yeah, I ate that one good. Oh, well. Oh, thanks Kiyamba for taking that. Because uh, that projectile... It's not really the best projectile attack out there. For example, what I usually do when playing online, when I'm... Uh, my main weapon is the gun lance online. And most of the armor that I usually wear gives me guard up, which pretty much makes all unblockable attacks blockable. It's quite nifty. And then what I usually do for most projectile attacks is I just get in front of the projectile because most projectiles like Baryoth's Ice Ball or Rathalos's Fireball or Logicrus's Thunderball, they pretty much disappear as soon as they hit one person. So what I just do is put the shield up in front of the projectile and just tank the hit because I am not really phased by it and that way no one else gets hurt. But there are some projectiles that that doesn't work with, like I think the Agnactor's Heat Beam just... Even though I will block it, it will just go straight through me and hit anyone else behind me. So that's not gonna work. Anyway, bury off. Oh, thought that was gonna clip me on the way there, but no. Nice. Now he's getting tired already. Can't be long until he starts praying on the... Oh crap. How did I not dodge roll there? Oh. You might want to be a little bit careful with the hip check. Oh, there go the tusks. Because if you're on the other side of him when he does that, it might hit you on occasion. It kind of has a wonky hitbox. But then again, Monster Hunter is pretty much infamous for having wonky hitboxes on a whole bunch of attacks. I haven't played the original PS2 Monster Hunter much, but it was really bad in that game from what I've heard. Especially with the Plesioth, who we're gonna be having run-ins with later on in the LP. Yep, he's not really doing anything anymore. Oh crap. Just when I say that, he starts becoming active again. Oh sure, just hold still and let me break your wing please. Alright then, just break. Pretty sure they break a lot easier with an impact weapon. But because I'm not very good with impact weapons, I'm just going to stick with what I know. Because I did try using like a hammer and a hunting horn in an arena quest. It didn't really go very well, so to say. They're kind of, especially the hunting horn, the hunting horn is just balls off the wall crazy the moves and you have to memorize all the songs it can play and I, I like the concept behind it but the execution is just not for me ah damn it all right cleanser okay so he did have a couple 
So if you use that, it just breaks you out. It's pretty much exactly the same as the Baroth and his mud. Except it's snow or ice or whatever. But it works exactly the same. So if you want to get out, you can just let yourself get hit by the monster or let Cha Cha or Kiyamba smack you. Or just walk around until it wears off or use a cleanser. Alrighty. Come on, Barry off. Bust out a couple new moves or something. Although this fight is probably a little bit more difficult if you have a slow weapon. Like a great sword or something. Because the Baryoth will be moving around quite a lot and you really do need to keep up. I remember in Tri, a lot of people on GameFAQs were like asking, Oh, how do I beat the Baryoth? He's too difficult. And most people just said, Oh, use the sword and shield because it was the, the fastest and the most mobile weapon in that game. And I pretty much used the sword and shield from the beginning in Tri. So that was pretty much the weapon I was going to use anyway. And it worked pretty well, allowed me to keep up with the barry off pretty easily. Until I broke his wings at least, at which point I just started... Damn it, I was trying to get that shiny thing. Just a wyvern here, I'm not sure what I expected. Barry off doesn't really have any particularly rare drops or anything. It's not like he has a barry off plate or something that you're going to have to kill 30 barry offs before you're finally going to get one. Because that's pretty much how it works with... Most plates and rare things for people in this game. Um, hmm. Where is he? Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, another hot drink. There we go. I wonder what's in the hot drinks. Like, what is it? Coffee or hot cocoa or tea? It looks red. So that doesn't look particularly good. And I think, I'm not sure what the ingredients are, but I think you use hot peppers to combine for them, or something. So basically you're drinking, like, jalapeno pepper juice or something. I don't really think that's something you should drink before fighting gigantic creatures, because... I ate a jalapeno pepper once, I had no clue what it was, it was like on the side of a plate. On the side of my plate in a restaurant. And I thought, oh, this looks like some sort of tomato thing. And I, I love tomatoes, so I just stuffed that thing in my mouth, started chewing. Never did I regret anything more. Well, other than watching a PewDiePie video. If there's one thing in my life that I wish I could undo, it would be that. Anyway, geez, he's limping already. See, I told you the Barry off is... Well, he doesn't have a whole lot of health, so he will be dropping pretty soon. Also, of course, the pain ball wears off just as he leaves. But luckily, the barry off is quite predictable, because he will always go to Area 6 when he's tired or almost dead or limping or whatever. Because that's pretty much the barry off's nest, and I think it's like the only monster that even goes there. Why is he in here? Stop contradicting me, damn it! You're supposed to go to Area 6. Oh, jeez. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Freaking douchebag Barry off contradicting me. But yeah, Area 6 is pretty strange because really no other monster in the Tundra even goes there. And it's not like the Tundra has a shortage of monsters. You have the Lagombi, the Barry off, the Giganox... The uh, Jade Baroth, Glacial Ignactor, Baleful Gainox, Great Baggy, Devil Joe, Brachidios. That's like 10 monsters already. And yet the Baryoth is still the only one that even goes to Area 6. So yeah, just like the Flooded Forest, the Tundra is pretty limited. Maybe they should have like added an underwater part in the Tundra, that'd be pretty cool. Like, fight a, uh... I wonder what monsters would appear. Maybe, like, add... Maybe have the Glacial Ignactor go underwater or something. I mean, it's related to the Logia, Chris. It probably can. Oh, there we go. He's dead already. So, yeah, the Baryoth. Might be daunting for new players. 
Not so much for veterans, especially because they nerfed him to hell in this game. He's probably a lot worse in high rank or G rank. Pretty sure. And he doesn't have a whole bunch of health, unlike, say, the Durambaros, so he's gonna be dropping pretty quick if you just use the appropriate weapon, which is obviously fire, because fire beats ice. And yeah, that's all there is to this monster. Now let's get some quick mining in before we go back to the village and see what's up. Now you know that something's gonna happen in the village because this video is still like five more minutes. So yeah, something is about to happen. But what could it be? Ooh, mystery charm. Pretty sure it's not gonna be a good one because... Hell, if you could get like all the good charms in low rank then... That just kind of break the game, I suppose. Well, maybe not so much. But, um... Yep, back to the village we go. Let's see, a pelt, shell, claw, shell. Some armor spheres, a whole bunch of charms. And claw and a frost sack. And what do we get? Crap, 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 crap. Who saw it coming? Jeez. Okay, I know the Maestro plus 4 might seem decent, but in G rank you can get like a Maestro plus 10. So just don't bother. The only good charms you'll find are in G rank. Alright, back to the village. See what the hell's going on over there. Can be good. Mm hmm. Oh, what's up? Got news. Oh, it's about the big underwater dragon thingy. Mm-hmm. It's way too much for single hunter to handle. Well, that's bad. It's called the Sea Deus. Oh, and we're supposed to evacuate the village. Wow. Really? It's that dangerous? The village is unsavable. Well, I must say it was pretty stupid of them to build the freaking village on the water. Okay, there are a whole bunch of ferocious creatures on land, but there's a whole bunch of ferocious creatures in the water as well. Also, no new quests. So, really, all we can do right now is the Diablos. Well, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Oh, the chief used to be quite a hunter. Yada yada. Oh, the ancestors built a village here on top of the ruins to guard them. And they are now underwater for some reason. Oh no, the village was sunk by earthquakes. I'm gonna blame the log eakers for those as well. Mm hmm. Uh, yapping about some investigation. And he's here watching the ruins in the village and whatever. Mm hmm. Yes, yes, monster are behind the quakes. Oh, he thought the Long Eucharist was the culprit because he didn't think anyone or anything as big as the Sidaeus could exist. Oh, and the Sidaeus killed his ancestors. So now it's personal. Oh, what, you're telling me to give up? Ah, oh, no, man, I ain't giving up. I'm not done killing shit yet. You sit tight and... What, what did you just say? You're going to hunt the dragon? I didn't say... That. What when he, the Loggy Chris doesn't punch. The Burkidios, now he punches. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm, I don't hunt alone, I have Cha Cha and Kiyamba. It's true, you aren't alone. Our boats will get you to the Dragon's Cave, our base camp will keep you safe. Yeah, sure. Just get to work and help me kill this thing so I can save your village and we can move the general story along, okay? Yep, thanks kid, I'll talk to the other villages, whip up a good hunting strategy. And why would they... Like, evacuating this place is not hard. I mean, how many people are there in this village? Like, 20? Mm-hmm. That creature's cave is part of the ruins under our village. So it's like, right underneath the village. Oh, that sucks. Oh, there's tons of ancient anti-monster anti weapons there. Ooh, alright then. That sounds interesting. Oh, they find a perfect spot to build a camp. Wait, didn't we already have a camp? Oh, well, great. A freaking villager request. 
Let's see. Oh, at least I have everything I need other than 1,500 resource points. Well, crap. Okay, let's check the MOGA forecast. Aw, oh, come on. Well, I'll just do that off-screen, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Monster Hunter. Bye-bye.